Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving this day. Today we are going to read your heavenly verse. Make us understand your words and talk to us through your words. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Let us read Joshua chapter 20. The Lord also spoke unto Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Assign, you cities of refuge, of which I spoke unto you by the hand of Moses, that the slayer who killeth any person unintentionally and without premeditation may flee there, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he... And when he who doth flee unto one of those cities shall stand at the entrance of the gate of the city and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city unto them and give him a place that he may dwell among them. And if the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hand, because he smote his neighbor without premeditation, and hated him not beforehand. And he shall dwell in that city until he stand before the congregation of judgment, and until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. Then shall the slayer return and come into his own city, and unto his own house, unto the city from where he fell. And they assigned Kadesh in Galilee in Mount Nephtali, and she came in Mount Ephraim and Kiriatarba, which is Ebron, and the Mount of Judah. And on the other side of Jordan, by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezer in the wilderness upon the plain out of the tribe of Reuben, and Ramoth in Gilead out of the tribe of Gath, and Gola in Bashan out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities assigned for all the children of Israel and for the stranger who sojourneth among them that whosoever killeth any person with, without intent might flee there and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation. Amen. Now let us read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now concerning the things about which he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have his own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife her due, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission and not by commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after his manner and another after that. I say, therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot have self-control, let them marry, for if it is better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command, Yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she is pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. But the woman who hath an husband that believeth not, and if he he pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were the children unclean. But now are they holy? But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether you shall save thy wife? But as God has distributed to every man as the Lord had called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. 
circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandment of god let every man abide in the same calling in which he was called art thou called being a servant care not for it though if not mayest be made free use it rather for he that is called in the lord being a servant is the lord's free man likewise also he that is called being free is christ's servant ye are brought with a price be not ye the servants of men brethren let every man in whatever state he is called there abide with god now concerning virgins i have no commandment of the lord yet i give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the lord to be faithful i suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress i say that it is good for a man so to be art thou bound unto a wife seek not to be loosed art thou loosed from a wife seek not a wife but and if thou marry thou hast not sinned and if a virgin marry she hath not sinned nevertheless she shall have trouble in the flesh but i spare you but i say brethren the time is short it remain that both they that have wives be as though they had none and they that weep as though they wept not and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not and they that buy as though they possess not and they that use this word is not abusing it for the fashion of this word passeth away but i would have you without care he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the lord how he may please the lord but he that is married careth for the thing that are of the world how he may please his wife there is difference also between a wife and a virgin the unmarried women careth for the things of the lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit but she that is married careth for the things of the world how she may please her husband and this i speak for your own profit not that i may cast a snare upon you but that which is seemly and that ye may attend upon the lord without distraction but if any man think that he behaved himself unseemly toward his virgin if she pass the flower of her age and need to require let him do what he will he sinneth not let them marry nevertheless he had standard steadfast in his heart having no necessity but hath power over his own will and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin doeth well so then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth but if her husband is dead she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the lord but she is happier if she so abide after my judgment and i think also that i have the spirit of god amen now let us read genesis chapter 32 and jacob went on his way and the angels of god met him and when jacob saw them he said this is god's host and he called the name of that place mahanaim and jacob sent messengers before him to esau his brother unto the land of seir the country of edom and he commanded them saying thus shall ye speak unto the lord esau thy servant jacob said thus i have sojourned with laban and stayed there until now and i have oxen and asses flocks and men servants and women servants and i have sent to tell my lord that i may find grace in thy sight and the messengers returned to jacob saying we came to thy brother esau and also he cometh to meet thee and four hundred men with him Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and herds and the camels in two bands and said if he saw come to the one company and smite it then the other company which is left shall escape and Jacob said O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac the Lord who said unto me return unto thy country and to thy kindred and I will deal well with thee I am not worthy of the least of all mercies and of all the truth which thou hast shown unto thy servant for with my staff i passed over this jordan and now i am become two bands deliver me i pray thee from the hand of my brother from the hand of esau for i fear him lest he will come and smite me and mother with the children and thou said 
I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And he lodged there that same night and took off that which came to his hand a present for Esau, his brother, two hundred she goats and twenty he goats, two hundred heaves and twenty rams, thirty mill camels with their cloths, forty cows and ten bulls, twenty she asses and ten flows. And he delivered them into the hand of his servant every draw by themselves and said unto his servant pass over before me and put a space between drove and drove and he commanded the foremost saying when esau my brother meet thee and ask thee saying whose heart thou and where goest thou and whose are these before thee then thou shalt say they are thy servant jacob's it is a present sent unto my lord esau and behold also he is behind us and so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed the drove saying on this manner shall ye speak unto esau when ye find him and say ye moreover behold thy servant jacob is behind us for he said i will appease him with the present that goeth before me and afterward i will see his face perhaps he will accept of me so when the present over before him and himself lodged that night in the company and he arose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the floor jabuk and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over what he had and jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day breaketh and he said i will not let thee go except thou bless me and he said unto him what is thy name and he said jacob and he said thy name shall be called no more jacob but israel for as a prince has no power with god and with men and has prevailed and jacob asked him and said tell me i pray thee thy name and he asked wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name and he blessed him there and jacob called the name of this place peniel for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved and as he passed over peniel the sun rose upon him and the limbed upon his thigh therefore the children of israel eat not for the sinew which shrank which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day because he touched the hollow of jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank amen let us pray heavenly father thank you for helping us to read your heavenly words be with us and protect us in jesus name we ask amen god bless you